guitar players, flat pickers, jam play members, non-members, lurkers, people who are just following along, seeing what's happening on the social media today and on the YouTube. Well, welcome to week five of our live lesson series here on jamplay.com. I'm Tyler Grant. Thanks for joining us. So we are working through a series of bluegrass kickoffs. Remember what a bluegrass kickoff is? It is simply a way of instrumentally introducing the song, starting the song. We're going to do a song this week called Keep Your Lamp Trimmed and Burning. This is a really cool, traditional, sort of gospel-style song. And if I was at a bluegrass jam, and there's other instruments around, there might be some other guitars, there might be a banjo, mandolin, fiddle. Ideally, there'd be a mandolin and a fiddle and a banjo and an upright bass. If there's other guitars around, that's cool too. Uh, maybe a dobro. Anyway, I'd look around the group and I'd say, okay, who wants to kick it off? The banjo player might say, I'd like to kick it off. And there they go. Boom. Ba -down, down, down, down. And then we start the song. There might be a count off. There might just be pickup notes. Um, but the kickoff is the instrumental instru introduction to the song. So we kick it off by playing a version of the melody that is spiced up and arranged for our instrument. Guitar has its own set of tricks. Banjo has its own set of tricks. And when you listen to bluegrass music, you're going to figure out sort of what these standard tricks are pretty quick. The banjo typically works it into a three-finger roll, um, an arpeggiated sort of very percussive, uh, punchy pattern. You've heard, you know, three-finger bluegrass style banjo before. The mandolin has its own thing. It might have some tremolo, it might have some cross picking, it might have some single note fiddly stuff around it. The fiddle's got the long notes. You can hold those notes for a long time. The fiddle is like a Hammond organ in a bluegrass band. It has the sustain. And so a fiddle can just play a really cool version of the melody and then do some trail off licks. Maybe with some chugga chugga sort of fiddle rhythm in there. Anyhow, the guitar has a few of its own tricks. We got single note uh, lines we can play around the melody. We've got cross picking, which we've introduced in this series, and we have melody strum. So in this particular kickoff today, we're going to get into a little bit of cross picking and also really focus on some single note sort of bluesy vocabulary. So let's go ahead and dive into this cool song here. Now we're going to be in the key of B. So I went ahead and, and arrived here in uh, open position to show you sort of how to treat the capo. So <clears throat> to play in the key of B, uh, I'm simply going to take this G chord and I want this to be transposed up to B. See that's that G note there? So move it up to A and then to B. So where would open position be? Open position would be the fourth fret if I'm playing a G chord to be in the key of B. If you were a bluegrass musician, this is your way ahead of this. You, you know all these tricks. But at a G position, here's a quick little thing to remember. G position, second fret capo is key of A, third fret is key of B flat, fourth fret is key of B. So I'm going to take this capo. There's lots of different styles of capo, obviously. This is one that tightens from the back. Um, so, and, and it just happens to kind of, if I tighten it up behind the nut there, it just kind of lives there. It's a nice little feature of this type of capo. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, so I'm going to put it on the fourth fret, and I have a couple little tricks here for keeping the guitar in tune with the capo on. It doesn't always work, but we, we do our best. Um, so first of all, you want to line it up across the fret, get it right next to that fret not quite on top of it, but right next to it. And then as I'm tightening down, this is sort of a... I actually learned this trick from my friend Bill Nershey, great guitar guy from the String Cheese Incident. Uh, you kind of like push the strings down while you're tightening uh, because the common thing that can happen is the strings will get a little bound up behind... The, it'll, they'll get pinched a little bit behind and pulled sharp. So when you're capoing, uh, sharpness is your biggest enemy there. So let's see how we are. That sounds pretty good. I'm going to double check with my tuner and make sure I'm on pitch. 
because it might sound in tune with itself, but as we notice with that B string, it's a little bit sharp to the tuner. So I want to be in tune to you. There's a tuner up here on my headstock, by the way. A little Planet Waves clip-on, that's what I'm looking at. Okay, so there we go. B string's a little closer to in tune. G has gone a tiny bit sharp, so... That's pretty typical when you're capoed. If I was sitting here in the bluegrass jam, I wouldn't be necessarily tuning this precisely. You know, being a tiny bit sharp is, is really no big deal. You're not gonna necessarily hear that in the mix, but I want you all to sound good playing along with me, and I wanna be in tune to the rhythm track. So I'm gonna double check. Notice I'm tuning like the, some of the actual notes I'm fretting of the chord. The open E string, sure, you can tune that, but when you play it on the third fret, it might be a tiny bit different. So I'm gonna make sure that third fret, which is my, my root note of the key. There we go, that sounds pretty good in tune. So low E string, high E string, and the B string, I tend to like double check the tuning on the third fret as well as the open string because those are the frets I'm holding down on that bluegrass B chord. So that's the bass line there. I want this chord to be in tune. <clears throat> now the key of B in bluegrass was sort of um, brought along by uh, Pioneer's father of bluegrass, Bill Monroe, and a young singer named Jimmy Martin who was in his band in the late 40s, early 50s. And Jimmy Martin claims he introduced Bill Monroe to the key of B. Bill Monroe claims, I was the first man to play in B because I wanted to key it up where my voice was. His voice is a little higher. Um, <clears throat> so instead of playing out of G, he wanted it to be higher. Um, and so a lot of bluegrass is in the key of B. And it also, on the guitar and on the banjo, which are capoed instruments, it has a really nice punch. So we like the key of B for that snappy punch, as well as for high tenor style bluegrass vocalists. My voice, I can sing good tenor, but my lead voice is a little, you know, not quite in the tenor range. So it might be a little bit high for me singing this song today, but let's see how it goes. Um, I just wanted to do something up in the key of B, and that's typically where this song is played. Uh, but here we go. It sounds like this. Here's just a verse and a chorus. Troubles and trials almost over. Troubles and trials almost over. Troubles and trials almost over. See what the Lord has done. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. See what the Lord has done. Okay, there you go. Um, so let's get into, first of all, the changes. We're in the key of B, uh, but we're playing out of G position here, right? So it's all one and five. There's no four chord. In other words, the chords are G and D. <clears throat> so with a regular old boom strum rhythm, and I'm playing this closed G chord, I call it, the bluegrass G, with my third finger on the third fret of the B string fourth finger on the third fret of the high E, second finger is holding down the bass note, and the A string is deadened by my second finger. For that nice punchy, we don't want that ringing in there, we don't want that third. We just want that nice open fifth of this chord. <clears throat> so, uh, here's the rhythm, and I'll count you in, and let's go ahead and have a look at the lead sheet while we're doing this. So you can see where they go, but I will shout them out as we go as well. I'll, I'll just shout one and five. So you get used to the numbers of the chords, because that's really important in bluegrass jams. So here we go, on the one chord. One, two, three. Here's the one, 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 and the five, five, five. One. 
back to the one and a five back to one repeat and So there's the rhythm. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the melody on the lead sheet. So this being sort of a bluesy style melody, um, again, I'm sort of squaring this off on the lead sheet here, making it sort of a basic version of the melody. <clears throat> okay? So let's go ahead and try this along with the rhythm track. And there's a couple slides, and those slides are meant to be right on the beat. So this pickup note comes in on the fourth beat. So I'll count one and two and three and four and one and two e and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two three and four and one and two so let's just play it like that. I know there's a little bit of syncopation in this. It's not quite as straight ahead as some of our other melodies. So before we turn on the rhythm track, let's play it just like that, really, really slow, and I'll count the rhythm even slower. <clears throat> so here we go. Play this with me. We're gonna play it once through and then repeat it. And then after that second, uh, after the repeat, you take the second ending, right? So here we go. From the top, here's the pickup notes, on into the downbeat and on through the lead sheet. A one, and a two, and a three, and four. exactly the same as the first ending, just without the pickup notes it's taking you back to the top again. Okay, I, I missed a couple notes there because uh, I was busy shouting out the uh, rhythm to you. But you'll see the pick strokes in there. It's a down and a down E and up. So those little up strokes happen on those little syncopated 16th notes. So to hear this a little bit better in context, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the rhythm track and let's play this lead sheet along to the slow rhythm track, 50 beats per minute. A one and a two and a three and... It depends on who you're following, who's leading this song, because oftentimes you'll put a, uh, a little bit of a pause between the verses. And I'll tell you more about that when we get into the actual arrangement. But for this, we're just going straight from one time through right into the next time through. And uh, let's go ahead and do that again, exactly as we did the first time, uh, just to get this a little bit better in our heads. So here we go, playing the basic melody from the lead sheet with the slow rhythm track. A one, and a two, and a three, and...
I did a little hammer on there just it's it's hard to avoid doing that because that's sort of how the vocal phrase go but it's that's the basic melody you can always throw in those little ornaments and there is a fine kickoff just like every other lesson in this series if you get a good version of the basic melody and there's somebody backing you up on rhythm that's a fine kickoff in itself but we're going to move forward here and we have a couple different versions of this and I'm going to save the cross-picking version for the end because it's actually a little bit more intricate. And while we're on this melody, I'll bet some of you are already feeling the urge to start going. To just start doubling up some of those notes. I sure am. It's hard not to when you hear this type of song going by. So let's go ahead and check out the actual kickoff I've arranged here. And this is getting into some of our bluesy figures. We got some flat thirds in here and a lot of sort of chuggy kind of dug a dug a one e end a two e end a down up down up chugging along kind of rhythm. So let's go ahead and work our way through this and then I'll show you the cross picking version as kind of a bonus because we've been doing a little bit of cross picking every week and I want to keep you going on that. We're using the same patterns as we've done in this series. So here's the kickoff. We're starting with a busier pickup note, a busier series of pickup notes. And so it goes like a one and a two E and a three. So those are the pickup notes. It starts on an upstroke, a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Very simple fingering, right? This is all based on G minor pentatonic scale. I'm referring to the key of G as the fingering. We're in the key of B, of course, because we're capoed up, but I'm going to call this a uh, G pentatonic, a G minor pentatonic pattern in open position. Same as that, but down in open position. Very common. bluegrass flat picking language to use that particular uh, G minor pentatonic scale in open position. So up, down, up, down, up, down, and there's the downbeat. And what do we do there? We go down, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down. So very simple note wise, it's all about getting the rhythm here. So from the top up to that first measure, it goes a one and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and a two and a three and four and. Now we're on the five chord and we're going to play that D melody note and start doing the same thing. So there's one little little lick with the note below, down, down, up, down, down, up. Then you just double the open D string and work your way back up to the F note, to the open G, then back to the original figure. Okay, so to get this into context, listen to the pickup notes and the first two measures. Oh, one and two. And a three, and a four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. So you notice there's one little. Uh, that's optional, that little open D string right before the last two notes, three notes of the second measure. Oftentimes, I'll just grab an open string if there's an opportunity to do so, even if it's in the wrong direction as this one is. Up, down, up on the D string, and then the next downstroke on the G string. 
you'll get used to that kind of thing. You'll get used to that kind of thing with um, with flat picking. But that's just uh, thrown in there, like listen to that measure. It just gives it a little bit of an extra propulsion, right? And when we got those open strings, we use them as much as we can in this style. So this is basically the first half of the kickoff. This, there's not a lot of material here. It plays the same thing twice in a row. Um, so, so we're halfway through the arrangement, just with these first two measures. So let's go ahead and try what we have so far, nice and slow, you and me without the track, and then we'll try it with the track on. So here we go, the pickup notes through the first two measures. A one, E and a two, E and a three. time because I know getting those pickup notes might be a little bit tricky. It's the three E and uh, so it's on the very next division right after the three. Three E. So the, the next sixteenth note after one E and two E and three E. That first little little one, little sixteenth right after the third beat. And that's why it's an upstroke. Okay? So here we go. Uh, one more time, same thing, I'll count you in. A one, E and a two, E and a three. Okay, now this is like the gist of this kickoff, so we're just going to focus on that much while it's fresh in your mind, and let's go ahead and play that much with the rhythm track, slow tempo. Here we go. A one, and a two, and a three. time, same thing. A one, E and a two, E and a three. Okay, what happens next, you can probably figure out. Um, we're gonna keep going with that same figure. Then, to end it, just do that kind of dressed up version of the melody. So we're gonna work our way up from the open G up to that flatted third there, your B flat. And again, I'm talking in G language, even though we're capoed up. First finger on the first fret, and then hammer on to the third on the B string there, and then, okay, so, okay, then, so that's a down, up, down, up, down, open D, G, third fret, and then you're back to the beginning of the repeat, so those two dots uh, right after the pickup notes there. So you take the repeat and you play the exact same thing again. Then you take the second ending, same as the first. Then we end it with a G rod. Now this is a cool bluesy version of a G run. So on the open G, and then the open A string, play the first fret, slide it up to the second fret, 
on the A, and then open D, and then third fret with a down stroke, and then the next down stroke, grab the open G, play the open G. So, then this represents how you get back to your bow strong. And that's where the track will, will trail off, okay? So, this type of G run, each week I'm kind of showing you a different, slightly different version of a G run. This is a nice bluesy. And instead of, that's a little bit more kind of happy. This one's a little more, I don't know, intense, I guess. A little more bluesy, a little bit, um, uh, I don't know how to say it, a little less bouncy. That sounds, I don't know, like, like a little more like we mean business, you know, a little less playful, okay? So, um, so let's play through this entire kickoff really, really slow, just you and me without the rhythm, okay? From the top. A one, and a two, and a three. To get this in your head a little bit more, well, before I say that, let's just go ahead and try this with the rhythm track while it's fresh under our fingers. And then I, I will reveal this insight I was about to say. Here we go. Let's try it with the rhythm track from the top. Here we go. A one, and a two, and a three. time while we're getting warmed up to this. Here we go with the rhythm track, slow tempo. A one and a two and a three. So what I was going to tell you is, we're playing this twice through, and let me let me sing it in context so you kind of hear how I'm arranging this. <clears throat> troubles and trials, almost over. Troubles and trials, almost over. Troubles and trials, almost over. See what. So I'm 
saving the little half measure for the end of two times through the melody. If you're in a bluegrass jam, somebody might do that between every single one. That's what I'm saying. You got to look out for these things in the context of a jam. And if that were to happen, you would know it pretty quick. Um, and it's the kind of thing that the jam leader might kind of say, okay, we're not doing the pause between, between sections here, you know. Um, but anyhow, that's, that's how we're arranging it. We're going twice straight through the melody and then doing the little extra couple beats at the end to give room for the G run and then we'll start the next time through. So this being the kickoff lesson, we're not going any deeper into the song. So uh, that's just a tidbit of advice to be aware and be attentive of who's leading the jam because there might be an an indeterminate number of beats or extra, you know, half measures or you know, in between one chorus and the and the beginning of the next verse. So the, a good, you know, singer or jam leader will cue those things. Uh, bluegrass music isn't always straight from one time to the next. Sometimes there's a few extra beats between one chorus and the beginning of the next verse or the beginning of the next solo or break. So, okay, let's try this at the mid-tempo now. Here we go at 70 beats per minute. Here's our kickoff. A one and a two and a three. time at 70 beats per minute. Here we go. A one and a two and a three. For those of you who are who are really on it and are raring to go, here is 90 beats per minute, sort of like performance tempo. That 70 beats per minute is a fine performance tempo, but here's another faster performance tempo. 90 beats per minute. If you're ready, give it a shot. If not, just listen. A one and a two and a three. caught me off guard because it's faster than we've been playing. It is not that fast though. In bluegrass style, you got to get used to playing at these tempos, which are a little bit quicker. Um, and it'll feel more natural if you're up in that zone and then you come down to this. Um, what I'm saying is this feels fast because we've been playing it so slow. So here we go. One more time at that fast tempo, just to redeem myself. Here we go. A one and a two and a three. So there you go, have fun with that kickoff. And now, as I promised, we'll 
get into this cross picking arrangement. Now this is really cool and this is just showing you how to adapt. Remember in every week we've done up until to this point, those of you who have been with me, we've explored a melody strum or a cross pick along the way to getting to our actual kickoff arrangement. This time, I just wanted to show you that I did explore this and it works really well. Um, so uh, let's just spend a few minutes going over this. So here's the cross picking arrangement, starting with, this is just a version of the melody from the lead sheet. A uh, little double stop here, first and second finger sliding from the third and second fret of the G and B strings, up a half step to the uh, fourth and third frets there, and then open G. And then once we play that open G, we're in our standard cross picking pattern. Over this shape, it's a uh, third finger on the fifth fret of the D string, second finger, sorry, first finger on the third fret of the D, of the B string. It's a D note. Anyway, this is your shape. It's kind of an open fifth uh, root, root, fifth uh, in, in this key. So you play the open G, then a down on the high string, and then up, down, up, down, up, down. It's that same pattern we've done every week. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Try it real slow. the pattern we're using throughout this arrangement. So we start with right into that little double stop figure again uh, and then open G and now open D with this shape of a D chord. Starting on the open D string, down, and then starting your pattern on the high note, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Same exact pattern, but just on this shape now. And then open G, and then this double stop figure again. Open G, and then that same thing we did in the first measure, open G figure. Okay, that same little double stop. And then we're shifting over, first finger right there where it normally is in the melody. And now this is a little tricky variation on the cross picking. That's really neat. And that's just something I found by, uh, I knew that the standard roll wasn't gonna work for fitting the melody notes in there. So I adapted it such that it, it all kind of fills in really nice. So down on this note, and then immediately an upstroke on the high note, then down, up, down on all three strings. Upstroke catches your first finger on the first fret of the B string, and then down the little minor pentatonic scale. Okay, kind of a couple things happening at once, but it's pretty easy once you get it. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So just that uh, lick, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, two, ready, go, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, again, ready, go, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, two, one more time. So since we're kind of uh, running out of time here quick, let me just, let, let's try this instead of going over and over. Uh, you know, you might have to come back and grab this notation uh, on the archive once that's posted, or just come back and play this section a couple times. But let's try 
uh, this arrangement. It, the second ending is the same as the first. And the same G run, and the same, same way out as with our kickoff, our single note kickoff. So here's the cross picking arrangement, nice and slow. First ending, second ending, and then the entire thing is arranged here. A one, and a two, and a three, and If you're not a Jam Play member, go ahead and become a member because then you can come back and check these things out if, if, you're, if you're missing it in real time. Uh, if you're getting it in real time, good for you. That is awesome. Uh, this is just meant to be sort of a bonus, and if you're interested in cross-picking, you know, you're probably going to want to come back and, and really dig into this. So uh, here we go. Let's just wrap up by going through our tempos um with the rhythm track and this cross picking arrangement so here it is at slow tempo 50 beats per minute a one and a two and a three and time slow tempo a one and a two and a three and I just love that. So neat. Every now and then you'll stumble upon one of those really cool things that just lay out really well on the guitar. So here we go one time on the mid tempo, 70 beats per minute, cross picking. A one and a two and a three and. through it just fine but I missed I missed something on the on the repeat so one more time just to get it all note perfect for you here we go mid tempo 70 beats per minute a one and a two and a three and
goes. Let's see how it goes at the fast. Like I said, this seems fast because we've been going so slow. But here it is, 90 beats per minute, cross picking. A one, and a two, and a three. so on. I would suggest you learn this song and uh, get into it. It's a really cool song that is an old-timey traditional number that works great for bluegrass style. Okay, go ahead and send in your questions and I'll chime in to answer them and we'll be back next week for week six. Same time, same place here on Jam Play. Thanks everybody. Sure was fun getting into this song with you. Got a question from Dave Schmidt. How important is the pick direction? I'm not following your example exactly right, but still getting the sound I'm learning. Well, eh, I wouldn't say you're necessarily learning bad habits. I'd say get through the piece as best you can and get it under your fingers. Once you get up to tempo, you're going to discover that if you're not uh, if you're not going by the guidelines of pick direction, um, you're not going to be able to play it at tempo. So you could sit here and play this thing slow with any with any kind of haphazard pick direction, and that's just fine. But once you get up to tempo, um, you know, and, and performance tempo might be faster than what we're going on this lesson here, even at the fast tempo. It might be... So getting that... Da, 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 one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. It is very important. So I'd say you know don't worry about bad habits. Just just do the best you can. And really, um, this is actually an excellent example of an arrangement that you can use to work on that pick direction. So just keep working on it and grab that notation because all of the pick strokes are written on there for you. Ideally, you want to have this thing going in your head, and even if you're just like watching me playing and doing this on dead strings, just notice where your pick is. You'll see that happening in the natural motion of your hand. And that's where the pick direction comes from. It's all based on the rhythm and the subdivisions of the beats. And there are players who are what we call sweet pickers, who only go the direction of the string. Tony Rice is one of these. That's really, really hard. I can't do that. Like, uh, I've, there's no way I would not even try. Like, there's my, I am not physically able to do that. So I use the rhythm directed pick direction, which is what I teach, and I would recommend you keep on plugging away at that, and you'll get it. Griff, Tyler, are kickoffs and breaks interchangeable, and what would you say the difference between them? That's a good question. They're, they are interchangeable, sure. Um, the kickoff tends to be a little bit more melody-oriented, where a guitar break can, can take off a little more from the melody. I mean, it's as simple as that. The the kickoff, just keep in mind, you're introducing the song. So you want the melody to be very clear. 
on your break, you know, a good bluegrass break will allude to the melody, but it doesn't have to introduce the melody the way the kickoff does. But we're speaking the exact same language on both bits of the song. So, you know, this kickoff can be used as a break for this song, totally. Um, however, if you did a break that was a little more riffy and a little more deviating from the melody, um, you know, that would be less favorable f for a kickoff than, than these, which really state the melody very clearly. Holland Boats, the melody of this song sounds minor and kind of clashes with the major chords. Um, this is blues language. Uh, in blues language, you're gonna have major chords happening with flatted notes around them. a flatted third and a flatted seventh. Those are the main blue notes we're using here. So that's just the way blues tonality, well, it's not a tonality, that's the way blues sounds. Um, your, your chords, unless you're in a minor blues, which we're not, we're, we're definitely in a major key here, um, but we're using those flatted thirds and flatted sevenths for that blues flavor. So notice that the melody on the lead sheet is getting up to that major third. However, on the kickoff, we're using that minor third. So that's just, um, I'm just bluesing it up. Good question. Okay, Luke, or like a sturgeon, you say there's some syncopation in the song. Isn't syncopation used in funk and jazz? How did it end up in, well, syncopation is in lots of different styles of music. Um, syncopation simply refers to accenting beats that are not strong beats. So your strong beats are one, two, three, four. If you've got anything accenting anything else, like one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and that's syncopation. I mean, rock and roll, the back beat, right? If you listen to the Beatles or Chuck Berry, um, that music is heavily syncopated. Bluegrass music is heavily syncopated. It's as rhythmically intricate as all these other styles you're talking about. Cool. All right. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this lesson. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, as far as syncopation, just just listen to some bluegrass music. Put on an album by Bill Monroe or Flat and Scruggs, and you're going to hear counter rhythms bouncing off each other. It's a very rhythmically exciting style of music, and it's a music that was built around old time dance music. So syncopation exists everywhere. It exists in classical music. It exists uh, all over the place. Uh, but yeah, listen to Bluegrass. Just, just, just give it a listen and listen to some Tony Rice albums if you're into the flat picking. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Had fun being here with you this week. I'll see you next week. And don't be strangers, all right? Hit me up on the messages and jam play if you have any more questions. Mm -hmm.